Let's bring back beer and pretzels together. Yeah, I think we need to work on these a bit. To finally making beer. Yeah, yeah. Sure. If I were a child, I'd be calling poison control right now. As far as I'm concerned, beer and pretzels are an essential food. And they share a main ingredient, which is yeast. So we're on a little bit of a research mission to find out how they're made so we can make a great beer and a great pretzel. Beer and pretzels are they're totally related. Yeah. They're the same thing. They're kissing cousins. Yeah. And there's also the minor variants of hops and salt, but you know, oh, you can we put, can overlook that. Yeah, you can put salt in the beer and hops in the pretzel. Do you think we can genetically pull something from beer and insert it into a pretzel? Like a liquid pretzel? <laughs> or, a, or a solid beer. Yeah, how hard do you think it would be? Pretzels should be easy to make. Beer is more complicated. This is a sanctimonious moment. We have not made beer together, like the three of us. Yeah, it's like moving through like a doorway. I'm ready. Hey, what's happening here right now is that we're making a mash, which involves taking the barley malt that we buy, we grind it up in, a, in the mill, and we mix it with water in here. And within about half an hour, 45 minutes, it winds up being a really, really sweet, sticky porridge. Theoretically, we could use the same recipe for pretzels. Instead of adding sugar, we could add malt. Yeah, you could do. Absolutely. Maybe give it a nice flavor. Too. Yep. This vessel here is our louder ton, which is used to separate the sugar from the malt solids after we uh, make our mash. So there's grain in there. It's like making a giant tea. It's like steeping yeah, tea. Yeah, sort of. There's a false bottom about two feet below the grain there that has a whole bunch of slots in it that uh, the, the uh, wort is running off into the kettle. This is the, the kettle. Uh, we're bringing it up to boil. We're going to add the hops to it, and it's going to boil for about 90 minutes. Smell good. Yeah, they're nice. They're really citrusy. They're really, they add a lot of flavor to it. I mean, that's really what hops do. They're added to give beer bitterness, but also give piney, resiny, kind of citrusy flavor, oh, some zing. Yeah. What we're going to try here is the Belgian wit that we make here. It's a really, really old style of beer. Anyways, cheers, cheers. gentlemen. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's a good idea, man. Like a pretzel cozy. Write yeah. that down. So, the idea. Imagine, if you will, a pretzel wrapped on a stein. It's a wicked idea. What about finding some commonalities in the, the recipe where pretzels and beer intersect, ingredient-wise and cooking technique-wise? It'd be awesome to put malt in a pretzel. I think that's a great idea. So. Yeah, it's a cool experiment. What kind of gear? do we need to make to help us make the beer? You have to basically take the hull off the barley, so you run it through a mill, like a malt mill. And then that exposes it to the hot water that's going to soak the, the starches out. And then we need a carboy, which is like a glass bottle to uh, ferment the beer in. And then it's where you pitch the yeast. Can we take some of this malt water off and put it into our pretzel, you think? Totally. Every time you've spoken in the last five minutes, you've had, had a pretzel in your mouth, yeah, you can't stop eating them. No, I can't. You said you guys were talking about having Aaron come down from Montreal to help? Out make the beer? Yeah, Aaron's the kind of guy who has three or four beers on the go in his fridge. He's a powerful brewer. I think that's all the gear we need. And we got all the, we got all kinds of flour for making pretzels. Yeah, and we have friends that drink beer, and we're set. All right. All right, to finally making beer and pretzels. Okay, so right now we're gonna make two different kinds of pretzels. The control pretzel and the beer pretzel. All right, so I'm gonna make a sponge with the ale yeast. You know, what kind of flour are you gonna use? I, I don't know. So uh, this is an experimental be... one, right off yeah. the top. Let's go with a barley flour for that. Okay, so barley flour. Sure. Okay, and then our first yeast, which is our bread making yeast. We also have this red fife. Yeah, it's oh, red fife. Yeah. 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 yeah, red fife is uh, it's a heritage flour. Hey guys, Aaron is here. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Michael was saying you're pretty hardcore about brewing beer. Like you're, you usually have like four or five different kinds of beers going on. You know, so I like to brew a whole bunch and I get tired of one because I have like 20 liters of it. So by the time I get halfway through it, I'm kind of bored with it. So I give it to my friends and then I try something else. So what's going on? Well, right now we're just trying to figure out our pretzel dough. So okay, this, so is the, this is the control one? Yeah. All right. A couple of tablespoons of the crushed malted barley. 
So this is just like a malty wheat pretzel with a bit of grit. I mean, beer and bread are functionally the same thing. It's just one has more liquid than the other. Do you guys want some liquid? So malt water? Yep. Smell it. Yeah, it's... it smells like hot breakfast cereal. Oh, yeah. Uh, smells good. I'd drink that as a tea. Yeah. All right, so adding some barley tea. Yeah, it's just like barley and water. When we're thinking about these ingredients, if you can think of ways that we can incorporate them into the pretzels. Into the pretzels? I'd try a hop tea. A hop tea? Yeah, especially this is nice. This is Galena. It's a really strong, bitter hop, but at the same time, it has a really nice kind of floral flavor to it. Hops kind of have like three functions. Contribute bittering, they contribute aroma, and they contribute flavor. So these are whole hops? Yeah, these are whole hops. Oh, cool. Yeah. If you kind of crack it open at the base, you'll see like this kind of orangey oh, yellow powder. Yeah, right. And that's where the essential oils come from. You don't want to boil these for very long because these are really strong. Do you think it's a, a crazy thing to have hops in a pretzel? Why not? Right. How could it be bad? All right, so we'll try the, the hops. Thank you. Does it taste like burning? I feel like the backs of my eyeballs are getting scratched. Right. Yeah, yeah. If I were a child, I'd be calling poison control right now. What we found is that most of the ingredients used for making beer are the same that you would make for pretzels. And usually you eat pretzels when you're drinking beer. So why not make a beer retzel, a beer and a pretzel, sliding the beer into a pretzel cozy so they'll never be separated ever again. Both processes are fairly complicated, so we're gonna get started first on making pretzels. The Red Fife uh, uh, control pretzel dough is ready to rise. Nice. Our second uh, pretzel dough, we have to figure out. I was gonna say, there's, uh, I brought you three different grades of crystal malt. So this one mm. is kind of a light, kind of toffee flavor, is what it adds to beer. This one is deeper caramel kind of flavor. Uh -huh. And then this one, it has almost like a burnt raisin. You know when you have an oatmeal cookie with a raisin in it and it kind of yeah. burns? It has that kind of a flavor too. Love it. And what is crystal malt? Like, why is it so sugary? If you take barley like this, like malted barley, what they do is they're basically stewing it or mashing it like you would for making beer, but they're doing it in the husk. Mm -hmm. So all of those sugars start to develop in the husk and then they roast it and those sugars start to caramelize. And the darker caramelization you get, the difference in flavors. I think we should do the Munich malt Let's in our it. second I agree with all. batter. So rye, barley, Munich malt, some hop malt tea. water and hop tea. Whoa, no. smell it, man. It smells like yeah, a beer. It smells good. Yours? It's supposed to be a pretzel. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, I'll knead it and throw it in the oven, and then we get started on making the malt crusher. Yep. So I guess we'll just make like a rudimentary box, two axles going through the box, and one roller that's driven by a handle, and the other roller just like free spins. Yeah. We just weld the metal span onto the axle. Let's do it. The hopper is perfect. Is that, is that the malt crusher? <laughs> it's the cry of the lonely malt crusher. <laughs> it needs malt. I think we're ready to test good. out the grinder. Should we loosen it up a bit? <laughs> I don't think it's the loose. You don't think so? No, no it's just, it doesn't have enough friction. It's a lack of grab. Yeah. Right. It might work if both were turning. You know? See, if they're both turning. Yeah. Now, how crushed is that? Is that crushed enough? Not enough, no, right? it's not enough. Okay, so let's tighten it up. Well, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah. If I turn this one, no problem. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, that... that's what you want. Here we go. So let's fill them up. Let's do it. Something larger to put it into, though. Maybe. Oh, yeah, it smells good. I see dust. It's working. It's actually amazing. Aaron's looking good? Yeah, it's looking fine. Okay, the dough's risen. I guess we should start rolling out the pretzels. Is that the general shape, though, or...? Uh, it looks good to me. Yeah, good. I yeah, eat a yeah. pretzel that looks like that. Now, you think the malt and the hops that we have in the water will impart a little flavor into the outside? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, uh, should we start salting the yeah. Uh, yeah. pretzels? Yeah, that's our first round. How is it? Dude, nobody's <laughs> right in there. Is it raw? It's spongy. Well, they're really salty. They're a little rubbery, though. They're way rubbery. It smells like a stable. Yeah, I think we need to work on these a bit. Yeah. Like, majorly. They're way too salty. If you were getting beat up by a monster that was really scared of salt, these pretzels right. might actually have a purpose. What I did notice, though, is we created a pretzel that has a completely different flavor. I just feel badly right. because Aaron's not going to be around for when, you know, we actually actually finish the, the beer. We'll send by parcel, by courier, some beer and pretzels to Montreal. Actually, should we just go, since we don't have our own beer to drink right now, should we just go out for a beer? Yeah, and start fresh tomorrow? Yeah, start fresh tomorrow. Okay.
You guys ready to continue making beer? So uh, we just have to uh, create a mash. So we have to steep the grains and in that's the water. To get the sugars out? Yeah. That copper pipe at the bottom of the pot has holes in it so we can strain out the grains. And then how long does it uh, slosh around in there for? Um, they stay at 69 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. Okay, so the next step is sparging. So the water is gonna like dribble through this. And then what comes out of this pipe and the nozzle here? That's the wort. That's the wort, which is gonna be our final beer. Boiling. Rolling boil. All right, first hops. Yeah, 60 minutes. Oh, now you can smell the hops in the vapor form. Oh, yeah. It smells really good. Let's save some of this wort, and then we can boil some of our pretzels in the wort. Oh, yeah, that's it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So all we do is pitch the yeast after this carboy's filled with beer. This will take a week fermenting. Yeah. And then we'll transfer it to another fermenter, another week. Yeah. And then we'll keg it, and then we'll have beer in six weeks. All right. It's we awesome. thought making pretzels would be easy, but of course, we totally screwed up. The beer is fermenting, it's gonna take about four weeks, which gives us enough time to perfect our recipe. So we've come to Cafe Bavaria, where they make great pretzels, and hopefully we can learn something from them. The yeast is fresh yeast. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. This is called all -purpose. strong flour, which is uh, the equivalent of uh, all-purpose flour. Ah, you're supposed, by the law of the pretzel, have three windows that you see the sun through. Now, here's lie. See what it does to my wood? Yeah. It'll do that to your hand. This is a pretty serious step. It is. It's not something that you splash at each other for the fun of it, definitely. And lie is actually not poisonous after it's cooked. And then the lye creates that beautiful brown yeah, exterior. Yeah, and the taste. And the taste. We have ceramic plates oh, yeah. in our oven. These are going to be hot at 450 degrees. So you want to cauterize the bottom of the pretzel so it doesn't stick. Yep. Oh, they smell good. Oh, look at that perfect oh, they brownness. Smell good. This is a perfect color. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll say. Oh, it's so good. Can we just stay here and... And eat more? Yeah, as they come out of the oven, keep eating. Well, thanks for showing us. You're very welcome. The way of the pretzel. The way of the pretzel. Hey, weren't there uh, some uh, extra ingredients you wanted to add to the pretzel dough, too? Like, we're talking, like, malt, malt instead of sugar mm -hmm. to allow that kind of, like, nice kind of grainy flavor. Yeah. yeah. Any time that we can bring some of the beer stuff into the pretzel making, I think it's great. We should also set up a layer of fire bricks in the oven. Yeah. Why don't we start, start trying to make some? Uh, five cups of flour. Oh, we got lots of people coming over. Let's do yeah. a bunch. Okay. And why don't we put the malt in with the uh, the okay. yeast to activate it? The malt's gonna activate. It's gonna give it something the to yeast. eat. We want a saw. Like if you make shortbread, you don't put melted butter in, right? You you cut it in. Yeah. Yeah. This is really important. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ding dong our texture. I don't want to ding dong anything. No. Not not this early in the morning. We have to wait for the yeast and the water to go in before anything else. No, but why do you like pretzels? Uh, you I pretzels? totally associate pretzels with being a kid and going to baseball games, and it's kind of like a guilty pleasure, but it kind of felt healthy at the same time. It's bread. No, yeah, I know, I know. But it's all twisted and stuff, so it's like, it makes it feel <laughs> kind of kinky. So yeah, the yeast is already going, oh my god. It's good, it's a good sign. It means we're not gonna have flat pretzels. Okay, so yeast and malt and water, then... Yeah. How much sugar are you putting in? Oh, this much. Okay, yeah. 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 It's butter. I'm gonna do little shavings. Probably a lot of butter, right? Eh? Oh, yeah. tons, tons, tons of butter. What are you doing to the butter? <laughs> Getting it ready for the corn cob or what? You should maybe enter the uh, Royal Winter Fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's our infrared thermometer? Uh, I brought it out. It's, it's the... right by the coffee maker. How are the bricks doing in the oven? No. Uh, oh, 96. God. Our stove sucks. 95. Let's uh, mix the two, the wet and the dry together then. Are you stuck in a loop? You can't get out? <laughs> it's 
feeling good. The consistency of this dough feels perfect. I'm gonna introduce some hops into the dough. Okay, so those are four perfectly average pretzels. What else can we put in them? Because that's I like the, the idea of rolling them up. Yeah. The cinnamon toast pretzel. Cinnamon toast? Yeah, it's got brown sugar and butter. All right. Gonna do a pizza pretzel. Okay, gonna make a pickle pretzel. We're getting into the uh, potato chip flavoring area. <laughs> it's just wicked. Okay, here's the pizza pretzel. That's a righteous looking pretzel. If you started with a plain pretzel and then after two beers, you, you, someone handed you that pretzel. Or if you got that pretzel on the bottom of a two four, like you're like, win a hat or a t-shirt or a pizza pretzel. What are you doing? You're but those are like, those almond, are almond butter pretzels. But that's nice. not three windows, man. That's oh, awesome. Not three windows. Yeah, you're right. The Germans would be upset. When you make your own junk food, man, you can really take it up a notch. What Our pretzels are looking pretty awesome. Yeah, they look great. Do not swallow. Do not get on skin or clothing. Do Handle not eat. Hair. Wear rubber gloves. It says and do sink. not eat. If swallowed, call contact a poison control center or doctor immediately. Give a glass of milk and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so it says uh, for cleaning the floors, use one tablespoon of lye and one gallon of water. That's probably about what we want for our pretzels, right? Do it. But maybe put some gloves on. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice gloves. <laughs> Thanks. Those are those are really custom. <laughs> I'm sure those are like CSA approved. Let's start. Yeah, let's start. Just bust it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna dip this one into the wort. A little pre-boil. Oh, you're gonna pre-boil it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Just cool. to see. I'm gonna boil some in the regular water. Okay, press is going to lie. Holy mackerel, we have a lot of baking to do. Look at that. Oh, that's great. Waiting for the pretzels to cook. I wish we had like a little extra button on our stove, like a rocket booster. Said turbo. I would just like send flames up from the bottom. Some people have a lake to stare at. We have our pretzels. We always knew beer and pretzels liked each other, but now they're married. Check it out, the pretzel cozy. So you can drink the beer, eat the pretzel all in one. We've invited our friends to the beer garden to have some beer, to have some pretzels. We've made all kinds, pizza, apple strudel, uh, hops, all kinds. It's getting a bit rowdy though. We gotta pull out the beer. We've got plain pretzels, cheese pretzels. We have a couple of pizza pretzels. There's a pickle pretzel in there. Oh, There's yeah, a pickle right. pretzel, a hops pretzel. Yeah. There's a apple pie pretzel. A peanut butter pretzel, like ban squares. Banana, yeah. banana and honey pretzel. There's a couple of mugs that have uh, pretzels cozies on them, like this monster one right here. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you don't have to go too far to eat the pretzel and drink the beer. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Pretzel's good. So is it traditionally to eat the hops with the beer? You have a true beer pretzel that's made with the hops that we made the beer with. I'm gonna try one of the peanut butter ones. What's yours? It's a nobody. Um, oh, apple pie. Apple pie. No, but this is a brilliant idea because what's happening is the condensation is releasing my pretzel. Like when I started, I couldn't get my teeth around it, but the condensation is slowly knocking my pretzel off. Did you put the peanut butter in, bake it with it like right away? The, the dough was rolled out and we put the peanut butter inside and then just closed it. It's like uh, when you bake a cookie and it's got peanut butter in the middle of it, but it's salty and well, it's that good mix of sweet and salt and then beer. <laughs> I don't think you have enough. Hey, Mars, I think you should crack open your cheese pretzel. Oh, sure. Sure. I want to see what the heart of this one looks like. Oh, there's some oh, cheese. Right. Oh, look at that little cheese cavern. Well, well, uh, how's the beer, folks? It tastes like, uh, it's so like commercial, I want to say, but at the yeah. same time, you know it's homemade, so it's well, that much better. It's like something you would get at a store. 
I just, I can't believe this is homemade. Hamish, I'm gonna take a picture of you now, and a picture of you in 30 days with this diet. <laughs> on the pretzel beer diet. Yeah. So you guys ready to play uh, keg? Keg hunter? Yeah. Okay, so we have four kegs here. Three of them are empty. We have one full of beer, and we have a hat that the uh, contestant will wear. They'll spin the kegs until they reach the desired keg that they want, at which point I'll hook up the keg, we'll give them the good old high five, and uh, they'll either get a blast of air in the face or they're gonna get a uh, face full of beer. Yeah! Yeah.